Hello, my name is Connor Cunningham. I am a coach in the GAA in Ireland, but I have many interests, including football, rugby, uh, hockey, ice hockey, basketball, well, it's not as much basketball, but NFL and the like. So, this is my series. This is episode four of Coaching the Coaches. This series is about just sort of taking a beginner somebody who's relatively new to coaching in any capacity, giving them my thoughts, my ideas, and then we'll progress it to sort of training drills that you could be looking to do, and also how you're gonna interact with your your team, or your if, you, if it's something like tennis, you can do with a singular one. The three topics that are gonna be discussed today are repetition, number two is Parents value and number three is not overthinking okay so the first one is repetition there is there is a lot of comfort that comes from repetition in terms of the core values have to be every single week core values have to be implemented in your relative sport in terms of with hurling for example you need to be striking off your left hand side your right hand side you need to be striking 20 30 40 50 yards you need to be running on the ball moving tackling progressing twisting turning your body so that your body's ready for a match situation the whole point of training the whole point of training is to um, <laughs> is to make match situations so that whenever they come across them that they know what to do. There's no point in you having a hundred cones out, have nice lines, have a wee ball and you know the ball is just sort of sort of you know just drifting back and forth to the man and you, and you think oh that's a lovely oh, look at that. Some, somebody would be proud of that. That's no good. That's useless. Completely not in a match situation. Not in any match have I ever seen where a boy will float a wee, sort of, a wee ball over. He is getting into Daisy Hill or any hospital. Because if you're sitting waiting for a ball, the, the opponent has the, has the uh, upper hand. But also, you are at more risk. It's the same, exact same in Gaelic football. In training, we should be doing high fielding, we should be doing hand passing, we should be doing kicking from both feet, and then you should have a minimalistic approach. But repetition is so important for players, especially, um, I would recommend that you, especially in matches, you are always consistent so that after maybe a year or two they know your style you can't just be going into training or match especially matches changing it up all the time because that creates tension but it also creates an issue where nobody knows what you're going to do the a very important quality of coaching would be being consistent being consistent is everything if you're hard on a player but you're hard on all the players they will respect you more but if you're hard on one player for the, the sake of the other group or for a laugh or something you you've lost you might you might take you a year might take you two years but you've lost the group um so repetition for example at a home match we meet an hour before the match meet an hour before the match let the players in settle get them a couple of balls out let them just sort of sort of just get comfortable and then you call them in 20 minutes before the match get out the jerseys get out get a warm up done that should be your there's nothing there's that sounds boring but there's nothing boring about that at all and what i would recommend very very strongly is that when you do become a coach or you're helping out with a general coach make your warm-up drills the exact same for the whole season unless you see something that really needs work 
but at the start of a match, you, you're not you're not going to work on too much. You know, I, I think the first training session or two, that's at the start of the year. Sorry, the first training session at the start of the year, it's where you put in your workout for your warm up, warm up workout. For example, in hurling, what I do is um, let me just get my book. take the players in for the first training session of the year normally a Sunday or some sort of because our season in Gaelic and Hurling in Ireland runs from like February to October time so it's a lot of the summer months spring and summer so we would have more light and that's the reason for our season being then so I would bring the players in on a Sunday and because they're under age I would then the first training session is showing them the warm up warm up warm up warm up and it's literally half an hour 40 minutes and then in you put a match that's your first training session that's what i would strongly recommend because you see if you're going out to your first match and they haven't done the warm-up they're going to ask questions they're going to screw their nose up they're going to not be sure what to do and then they're overthinking repetition is to avoid overthinking that's what we want i don't care if it's under 10s or seniors, if you have a player that's thinking differently, he's going to play differently. You know, that, that goes without saying. So you need to <clears throat> make repetition so that in the county final or the first match of the year, everything's the same. Everything's the same, even the warm-up, because you will get the best out of them. What I would do is this here, I don't know if you can see that there. Um, I have here the long triangle, right angle triangle. Let's see this long side here. I get the players to puck the ball. That That's normally about 10 meters, 12 meters. Get them to puck the ball there. Then I get them to solo the ball in the diagonal. And I give a good hand pass, that's five meters. That they take the hand pass and they hand pass it to the fellow player. That's that's one of my warm ups. Simple, you're getting striking, you're getting hand passing, you're getting the body moving, you're, you're receiving a ball, and it's simple. Players know the drill. You do not, in any circumstances, go out, have great training sessions, and then go to the, train, the match and say, right, we're going to do something completely different because you're going to put the players off skew. Now, as I've said before, the match isn't very important, but you need to have the players relax. If you have the players that they're overthinking, which we'll come to later, you, you're not going to do the things that you were hoping to do when you set out to coach. So that's what it's all about. So repetition is to create comfort but also repetition is to create that they are in match-led situations and they can deal with them. As I say, there is some players in my life come across that can turn it on and off like a tap. They can't really. They're just they're just different mentality than me. But you need to train, um, as I've said before in previous videos, you have to have a minimalist approach. You know, you have to do shooting off both sides. You have to do shooting for goals. You have to do um, maybe one twos over the bar. One of the drills would be maybe 30 yards out from the goal, in the front of the goal, the left and the right. Then another cone. Um, See this? One player standing here, he starts over here, right? 
he the player here has the ball right you get the player here to strike it to this fella he catches it or he controls it your man's making a run or the lady's making a run through pass hand pass the ball off over the bar that that's as simple as a drill as you can do then the man moves over to here he he has there's another player here there's there's equal players here here and here he moves across he gets the ball there over the bar moves across to here took the pass from this gentleman or lady over the bar then he joins this queue there's people at the back so literally you have four or five at the back you have one player here he moves across this player here moves over to here it's, it, it sounds more complicated than it is but basically what it's doing is it's working on getting a quick reaction times and that's what you do in a match in a match you lay the ball off to your, your teammate you try and get in first third he pays it off to you and then you, you get the shot away you know it's not rapid chance and that's why your training has to reflect that your training has to be repetition in terms of what you want the team to do if you want the team to move the ball fast if you want the team to put the ball into corners if you want the team to start your puck your your puck outs or kick outs into certain areas you have you have to just practice that to make sure that you're doing it right but you have to be consistent you can't go out and after three weeks say no that's a fail not doing that again because the players it's only in extreme circumstances that, that would be acceptable because the players you need to think of the players you can't just keep throwing away the baby every four weeks or else you're not getting anywhere and you know what it might take three years to, to tweak something you might be kicking the ball out to the half backs and it might take two years to tweak it and then you say right i've got it i know what to do now and then, you, and then, you know, you're learning too. You're learning too. So, the second point is players' value, or parents' value, sorry. There is a lot of value in having the parents on side. If I think it's very important because if we, Jimmy, mom and dad, don't really like you or don't like the training, they're not going to keep Jimmy going. You have to create an atmosphere that's that's good for both. You have to create a situation where the players happy, the parents are happy. But as I keep saying, you're not you're not watering down or changing your style. You're just speaking and doing better, and that's an encouragement too. Because as a coach, you should be looking to always improve and always get better, just like the players. And if you've dealt with a situation like I have spoke about before, um, you you can learn from it, and then you can adapt, and then you can grow from it. Now you might take tears once, but at least you can grow from it. You can explain that you maybe misread, but nobody's gonna nobody is seriously gonna gonna chuck you out of places or take you away because you they appreciate the effort that you're putting in, but it just has to be a fine line that. The parents want to get on with you, so you, you have to get on with them. And you need to create an atmosphere where they are bought into it. Because if they don't, like I say, they 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 decide if the player goes or not. It's not you, it's not the player up until he's about seventeen, he the parents decide if he goes and the parents decide if he doesn't go. So you have to make sure that they are aware of that. Parents also add great value whenever they do help out. Now, in my experiences, I've made it abundantly clear that I want it done my way. And I, you know, not in a rude way, I've just said, look, this is my philosophy, do you agree with it? And if they say yes, then we can work. If they say no, then I say, look, I, I don't, I, I'm glad of your help, but I can't accept it and you should be you should be allowed and mature enough to do that you know if a parent comes to you and says can i can i please help my son 
um, I know what you're doing wrong. Well, that's going to get my back up straight away because as I've said before, my philosophy is that it's all about performance based, it's all about development based, and it's all about lifestyle based. There are the three main pillars of my coaching. You have to perform on the night. If you give me everything and we get beat, I'm not not overly not overly annoyed. But if you if you um if you don't give me everything and you're just puttering about and you're you're just you're just not in it, I I can't accept that and you know it's the same with, with parents. If, if a parent has a different mentality to you, you have to just say, no, I'm sorry. I could do your help, but I, I don't want to dilute what I'm doing. It's all about development. If we get beat by three points in every match we play, I would be happy because we're in matches. We're, we're, we're in the cut and thrust of it. We're really, where the moments matter. You don't want to be playing matches where you're beating teams by 50, 60 points because that's not learning anything. You need to put players in pressure situations to see if they can adapt, to see what their metal is because as much as it's a sport for fun and recreation, it's also about mental. It's all about mental. And you need everyone singing from the same sheet. As I say, it's not about do or die. It's not about the puck into the square to try and nick a goal unless it's a challenge of final or something. It's about development, it's about repetition, and it's about growing the players. If you're taking under 12s, under 13s, under 14s, you have, with under 14s, normally a, a player will play about senior 21, 22. You have eight years to develop that player. You don't have to get him ready by the end of the season. There's no, mar this is a marathon. There's no sprint involved here. You, you can take him aside, you can show him a few positions, you can, I keep saying he because that's the teams that I've talked so far, apologies if, uh, but it's, it's related to girls as well, or ladies as well, but you need to be aware of that, you are not getting this player ready for next season, you're getting them ready for a decade from now, so you have time, you have time to show them something, it might take six months to show them how to go on their left side, and put the ball into the far corner. But that's six months that were well used. And you know, what I would say is that parents add so much value in terms of lifts, in terms of uh, financing. As I say, the last three years, I brought in an orange and water uh, fund and I've asked the players, I worked it out that with for 20 players it was costing four, seven pound for the year for the, each player to have oranges and water. And I asked the players for, a t or the parents for a tenner each to give them water and oranges every month. And all of them did pay. And we did have oranges and water every month except one because I forgot, I forgot the oranges, uh, they had them bought and all so. But things like that are great when the parents are on side. Um, like I say, you, you, there is a lot of value with them, but they have to meet your philosophy, and you have to be strict about that, or else everything's going to come rough, tumbling down. They're going to become difficult. They're going to think that they own the space, and they don't. So, uh, point three: not overthinking. It might sound it might sound like an easy thing to do, but I. I am certainly not one of them. Um, overthinking, I don't mean, like when I'm driving to work every day, I'm driving home. I'm giving team talks in my car. I'm thinking about drills. I'm thinking about how do I implement a style that I want to do? How do I make it viable for the, per for the children that are there? Because there's no point in you having 50 yard strikes then a hand pass off and over the bar because the players would only do two of them and then they couldn't do anything else. You know that so you have to try and think how do I get the most production, most productivity out of such a small um time. But 
overthinking what I'm trying to say about overthinking is try not to overthink matches try not to overthink training and try not to overthink all of your decisions because you will learn from every decision whether it's a good one or a bad one whether I say and and you know in terms of overthinking always be accountable we talked about that last last week but if you are consistent we talked about that last week as well then you will get the respect of the players there was one incident that I had in the last number of years where a player told me <laughs> my own player when I was referee in one of the matches told me that I was biased against him I just think of that and I took him off the field and I spoke to him after the game and I said look that's out of order I'm trying my best I'm not a referee and I'm trying my best and the last thing I need is somebody having words with me that's what I'm talking about overthinking as long as when the parents come to you and speak to you if they're not happy about something and you're consistent they can accept it but if you're not consistent they find that it's maybe they would they'll maybe say that oh you're targeting him you're targeting her but overthinking is really just you know as I've said last week that um, if a training session doesn't work you can't pick the bones out of it and there's some good to think about with it you know you, everything is not a failure everything is not polar opposites and that's what I mean by do not overthink in terms of you if something goes right don't pat yourself on the back if something goes wrong don't quit threaten to quit it's it's about being steady being your own you know unless you're late to coaching um, you have many years to, to perfect this here it, it's a bit like it's a bit like running or it's a bit like you know going to do a course in in the college or tech you're not going to do it the first night you know you have to do two or three years or sometimes you have to do one year you can't you can't just perfect something in one night or one month and the, you, you can't have months where you think you've cracked it you think this is going so well everyone's everyone's happy parents are happy we're winning matches and then three of them go on holidays and the and the players just because they've been off i've seen it l last year we the july holidays more or less destroyed our whole season because in july in ireland they take two weeks off and the players didn't practice uh, we came back players couldn't care less they've been off school for a month they had no interest in training no interest in playing and you're sitting there going oh my god what have i got myself in for but then you just go home, you dust yourself down, you go back again, and then they're they're on it again. You know, I've seen it. I've seen it so many times where you're getting really upset. You think everybody is taking the so and so out of me, and then you realise no, you're you're over complicating this here. You're overthinking things. You're overdoing things because another point about overthinking that I have to make is. Do not, unless you're dealing with adults, do loads of stages in your training. Now, like I say, we will go through training sessions in the next maybe six weeks, but do not have, you know, a load of stages because you see after the first three children, you know, you're, you're wasting your time. I'll show you it earlier that I don't. And, uh, it seemed good enough idea at the time. That's it there. All you did was the player here, right, strikes the ball to this man. He lifts it, strikes the ball diagonally in your hand passing on the uh, vertical side so you're striking diagonally and your hand passing on the vertical the for some reason 
for some reason that was just rocket science and it was the wrong age group it was the wrong style you seen players players were going round in this circle so this player was reading the ball and hand passing it here and you were creating like a short circuit you were you literally were like oh my god what like this is simple but it proved like I, like I mentioned last week it proved about listening and you know you have to just abandon things like that there because in theory you overthink them because you have to know your audience and in overthinking that's the sort of point that I need to make to you that you need to know your audience because if you're dealing with senior players then you sort of have a bit more of an idea but because to me if I was the, the underage coordinator for our club I would be insistent on the same warm up for the whole year from year sixes to year to seniors same warm up striking drills um, the triangle um, you know three or four core warm ups every warm up the triangle the striking lifting bag a ball, a balls into the middle cone feet shoulder off and for that year that should be your warm up you can add a couple and then leave two spaces for the own coach to have their own setup. but it just leaves it that when the player gets we need to be thinking all the time when the player gets to senior level I know this drill I can do this drill I can do it well what happens all the time in our club is players come into the senior level and not it's not rocket science but they're like what the hell's going on i never seen anything like this here well, what's going on asking questions what that's fine that's fine everybody should ask questions the problem is it disrupts your your it disrupts your session whenever there should be an integration that there should be an integration and there should be continuity and there should be repetition you should know when I get there you need to be there 20 minutes beforehand you need to be there with your water bottle you need to be ready at half six we're then going to go into a sprint a lap of the pits then we're going to go into the cones then we're going to go in and then you can work on it at home you can work on it you can be more prepared warmed up ready to go because that's where you should be and that's not overthinking that's just that's actually underthinking that's making the player turn up go to autopilot because if you can get a player to go to autopilot then he he's doing it without effort and he's doing it well and he's doing it consistent and he's doing it consistently and if you can get all them things into the one package you're gonna get a hell of a player like regardless of what mobility he came with if he can do things consistently he works hard at them and he turns up and he performs because the, the, the biggest thing about performance is showing up being on time but being mentally prepared to play there's players out there that aren't really wanting to play and it does make it that you can see it you can see it in their eyes and god help them because you the game that we that we promote whether it's cricket rugby hurling football we all have pride in it we all love the game that we promote that coach so we are trying to pass on that love and if you don't under, if you don't overthink things then they they will get it because a child's mindset is completely different to us as adults us as adults i'm speaking from experience you get burnt you you know relationships don't work out or you have money problems and you, your stresses and strains and your life experiences make you more hesitant make you fearful make you make you sort of comfort the known Whereas a child hasn't got any of them things and they're actually 
they're actually curious. They want to push the boundaries, regardless of what it is. They want to, they want to enjoy as much as they can, and it's our job to help them with that. Because if they don't, if you don't give them the love of the game and the love of life, well then you are overthinking it. Because you know, if you go out to the session at night. You can feel you can feel bad too. You can go out some night and you can just play it. You know what? Well, I've got a session. Let's just play a couple of matches. Let's just get the, the rust off us. Let's just get out and get playing and, and set up four pitches and play, play, play. And there's nothing wrong with that. If somebody comes out to the pitch and says, "Jesus, I've seen you playing a few matches. No drills or not." Mind your business. And if somebody's got a problem with. They can they can take the, the whistle because you have to know your audience and that's what I, what I feel about under overthinking. Um, if you want to, you can subscribe, um, you can like. Um, I've, I'm really happy with the views that I've got so far on the series, and I hope you are liking what I'm saying, and I hope you will be sticking around because I I really do plan to. In the next three weeks, I want to speak about my philosophies about drill, different things in the next eight to ten uh, episodes. And then I want to get into drills and then I want people to, to start telling me about drills, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye.